It's, it's between two and five thousand dollars every month that you get working for this client. The only thing I'm afraid of right now is scaling too quickly because I I see how easy it is to to find clients in this AI space. Hey Jose, so you have been in the accelerator program for two months. Can you tell me which results did you get working with me inside of the accelerator? Yes. So, like in the first fifteen days, I got a really really big part project. Um, it's for a startup, an AI startup, where we'll, we're basically building um, a program for sales trainers. Uh, it's called Dylan.ai with two E's. <laughs> um, yeah, it was actually precisely 15 days after we, we started uh, the program. Uh, and yeah, I got to know these guys directly. the size of the, the project, like the, the size of the deal? Uh, it was, we started at 2.5 per month and now we're, we're going up, uh, uh, the range of like two to five. Nice. Nice. So it went up. It's, it's between two and $5,000 every month that you get working for this client. Uh, yes, I would say so. Nice. And <laughs> what is the work that you're doing? Like, what is the, it's basically you're building the MVP app or like the, the, the SaaS app for this client, essentially, right? Yeah, so it's really like similar to what we we are exposed to in the in the accelerator. Uh, we basically build MVP. I'm yeah, build, basically building an MVP for for the AI startup using like uh, normal normal tech. Uh, building all the features, planning what features to do and how to do them with the, with the client. So yeah, it's really rewarding because you basically own your work, and it's completely different to work like this rather than. Uh, just having a salary. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. And you landed a second project, I believe, as well, right? Yeah, so I got this one like 15 days after. And then um, a month or something afterwards, we got the second one, which is a voice agent. Uh, we're doing a, uh, like a, a receptionist for uh, some clinics in the, in the USA. Um, yeah, it's also related to, uh, to what to what I learned in the, in the accelerator. Um, it's a flat, flat that fee. Also a few thousand dollar project. Yeah, that was just a flat fee of two two thousand dollars and one month's work with uh, a lot of uh, prospects to to go for forward to expand on this. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, something that I I want to like uh, exacerbate because the the connections you make like you never just stop at basically one project. Like uh, there's always more to to do and to sell. So. Uh, the the true value of these these opportunities I got like uh, I feel like I am just scr scratching the surface, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And you, you joined the program two months ago, right? Okay. I remember at the time you used to work at a job, and now I believe you quit your job and you're full time working with clients. Yeah. Can you tell us like how has your life changed since two months ago when you joined the accelerator? Yeah. So. My plan, like ever since I started like developing, was always to just be good enough to like uh, basically work absolutely for myself because I I've had some constraints in the past, like family issues, health issues, stuff like that. So uh, I don't really like to um, sell my time or sell my freedom. So decoupling my my time from uh, my work like, that's uh, that's something that can make me or uh, happy or unhappy. You know? So. As soon as I basically understood that um, I could do this transition, I'm not gonna lie, like I wanted to do this even before, but I just probably didn't have the, the courage, you know, but um, I didn't want to miss this uh, this opportunity now. And I'm glad I did. My life looks like, to be honest, um, similar in terms of like my day-to-day -day life, what I do, but uh, I get to own how much I make and uh, my happiness, like working, uh, being able to own my work, my time, like absolutely, uh, there's no no price for that. That to me, that's uh, priceless. So, yeah, you have a lot more flexibility now in how you handle your days, how you handle your time. Yeah, like uh, I have a family, so I get to be with them like, all the time. Basically, uh, I don't have to miss anything. Um, and I can work anytime I want. Like, like I said, it ends up being the same because like the productive hours end up being sort of the same. Yeah, like, I, work, I work remotely as well, so uh, I cannot complain on that end. I always work remotely, but it's different. Like, uh, it's not like 
you know, it's different. It's just different. <laughs> I guess the days are similar ultimately, but the difference is that you work for yourself and yes. you have more control over what you do. Yes, it's absolutely so different. Feel like different. Like, do you feel very different compared to, let's say, like a few months ago when you were working at your job and that was your main revenue? And now, even if the hours are ultimately similar, because you, you do work, right? You still have like you, you want to have a schedule, but is the way you feel different? Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. Like I remember just uh, driving to school, like dropping off my my oldest kid at school, and I would always like ask my wife, like, how much money do you think I need to make, like every month for you to be one hundred percent safe, like, and I can just do my thing. Like uh, it would always be like in the back of my mind, like every task. I worked on every team I joined, uh, every project. I, I would just have it on the back of my mind. Like, you can do this alone. You know, you can. You don't have to to be led. You can lead as well. And uh, when I took the chance to, to own my uh, my work, I just wake up every day like really, really happy and proud. You know, it's uh, it's night and day in terms of like joy, personal, uh, and even like money wise because. The money you can make like this, uh, this is scalable. But the salary is not scalable. So that that part also also makes a difference. And how big do you think your business can grow? Like you started basically a few months ago, like around two months ago. You have two clients now. How do you see like the next couple of months going? How do you think compared to yeah. when you have a job, you have a salary, so it's kind of fixed, and you, yeah. you can have a promotion or something like this. Here, obviously. When you start your business, there's a little bit more risk because it's all on you, but the upside can be also huge, right? You can, from month to month, you could double your salary if you have an extra client or extra few clients. How do you see, how do you feel about like the next couple of months in terms of the growth of your business? Even in terms of risk, like that's something I, I would also like to address. So I think that if we are, we are realistic, like having a fixed salary is a much bigger risk than trying to get clients fixed. So if like someone that is in a job, like if you just try to get like two or three clients and see how, how easy it is, like because it really is so much easier than getting a job. Uh, like you'll feel that this there's no 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 risk at all. If you do some things like it's how Zorvik says, like what can you do that will basically guarantee that you can reach your goals? You can create a plan to basically make sure that there is no risk. And uh, like in terms of growth, like. From the clients I got, like, honestly, the only thing I'm afraid of right now is scaling too quickly because I, I see how easy it is to to find clients in this AI like uh, space. Personally, like I'm more in the automation, like agents space, and uh, like I've sold agents uh, in uh, birthday parties, like uh, everywhere basically. Like you just need to reach out to people and you will see that everybody wants this and needs this. There's a lot of money being put into this. So I just need to basically have some people to help me so I can scale this to to infinite. Like I don't see a limit on how much I can make on the business side. So I would say that. I love what you said about like the, the risk of having a job versus the risk of starting like your business offering AI services is, with a job, if you lose it, that's it. It's your hundred percent of your source of income is, is gone, right? If you lose yeah. the job, you know the job is, is a bit more stable because every month you know the salary. But if you lose it, that's it. All your income is gone. If you have a yeah. business with multiple clients, you will need to lose every single client for your income to go down to zero. Yeah. And ideally, if you scale a business, you have multiple clients. That's like multiple salaries coming in your bank account, and yeah. you have to lose all of them really to be at, at full risk. Exactly like what you said. And exactly right now, for the next few years, the opportunity is just insane. Because everywhere you go, like every business out there, they are looking to add some AI automation, some AI agent. And most of them, they don't know who to talk to. They don't know who can do yeah, that. Yeah, like that, that's exactly true. Like I, I was just remembering, like even yesterday, like I went to a, to a clinic just for a, for a health checkup. And they asked me what I did. I just said I do like AI agents. They were like, oh, we need you. Like, okay, <laughs> do you have money? I can give you whatever you want. You know, so basically everybody wants this. Like uh, everybody, like, I feel like everybody on the back of their mind, like especially business owners, like they feel like they're missing out and they need somebody to like teach them how to write and get the, the competitive advantage that AI can give them. So the work itself, like the development itself, is nothing special. But uh, 
the the way to communicate that to to businesses, you know, like being the bridge between the, like the technical aspect, which as a developer you should already like know how to do. Like if you learn how to communicate your your skills and the value that your skills can give them, like the world is yours. Uh, I really that in, in the accelerator, like we, we get really exposed to that as well. I remember also before you joined the accelerator, like when we were speaking together, you mm -hmm. told me you're working at the job, but you really didn't like like. Or you, you didn't want to stay at the job much longer because you, you thought it was boring and you really wanted to start your business. Like you said, it was your ultimate goal. How long were, were you feeling that way before joining the accelerator and what made you want to actually join, like take this step? Yeah, I, I felt that like ever since my first like internship, um, I always wanted to do it by myself. I just didn't have the confidence. I just built my confidence over time, basically. Um, it was basically a few years that you had this in your head, like, I want to start a business. Yeah, like, I even remember, like, two years ago or three years ago, like, I still have my first, like, GPTs, like, my first questions. I remember, I remember like, trying out ChatGPT and thinking, like, okay, this is going to change the world. When people, like, pick up on this, like, it's game over. I should, like, drop everything I, I, I do and focus 100% on this. And I... One year passed, two years passed, you know, and I saw the people that did what I should have done reaping the fruits of what I that I could have like uh, you know ripped for myself so I didn't want to do it again like I refused to just miss on this opportunity and uh, I just took the chance business really rewards speed that's something big like in business like speed is like the people who act fast they see opportunities they jump into them like they reap usually most of the rewards yeah. speed is as soon as you see an opportunity going but what made you actually want to join the accelerator I'm curious so, like, you had all those thoughts. You probably discovered this somewhere on, on YouTube or somewhere else. What made you actually want to join? Yes, so I basically wanted to act on my bias for action. I didn't want to overthink. So, like, one day you were just on my suggested videos. Basically, like, I was... I don't even know what I was doing, but I just watched, like, two videos and decided to book a call. And that's it. I didn't know how much it cost, like, what we were supposed to do. Because, okay, this guy... It's called uh, the Code Bander, so he likes anime. I like anime. Okay, let's book a call. <laughs> That's it, basically. And yeah, I just went head first. Yes. I always spent a lot and invested a lot of my time on uh, learning and finding like great mentors. I have really good mentors uh, around me. And um, there is no point in trying to find like the absolute, very, like the best thing in the world. Because all of them, like if they're good, they're good, you know? Uh, this one, like, it's clearly really good, you know. Your program is clearly exactly what I was working for, but people sh shouldn't just stop and analyze because when they do that, they will never move forward. It's, it's like what you're saying. So you, you just yeah, got to get like analysis paralysis. You get stuck and then you don't do anything and the, the whole, like, air revolution will just pass yeah. into your eyes. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just didn't want to go through that again. Like I've seen like a couple people, like but they sounded like more salesy. I think that you also like felt more, you know, relatable, and uh, you know, just like a normal normal guy, you know. So I I went forward. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, man. And uh, who would you recommend this program to? Who who do you think would really benefit from this? And like, if you if you're watching this, like. You like if you're watching like so far, uh, I think this is for anyone listening because like anybody consuming this content that we are producing like in this very moment is someone that has that itch that knows that they want to to move forward that they want to do something, and they just shouldn't wait and carry on. I know this can sound like salesy, but it's it's exactly what I did, and I'm, I'm not. I don't. I don't look back. You know. Uh, do you I have any advice more, for people? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that you know, this is for anyone that wants this. Basically, there are a lot any of developer who, any developer who wants to monetize their skills, to yeah. start like a business in this AI revolution. Basically, yeah, like this is this is the best time to be a developer. Like I see all all the all the time people crying like oh. This is really bad. Oh, we're gonna get replaced. <laughs> who who knows how to pilot this better than developers? Like nobody, you know. We have like normally like entrepreneurial minds, problem solving minds. Like we we can handle, we can 
transition into this type of technology like faster than anybody else, like, this is the best time to be a developer. Uh, so yeah, like just learn how to, if you want to learn how to make more money and be like in the forefront, in the vanguard of what is happening right now, just, just go <laughs> accelerate and learn how to do it. Like it's, it's not time. Uh, not complicated decision. Is there any advice that you have for, imagine someone who is where you were a few months ago, right before joining, is there any advice that you would have for them? Yeah, man, just don't be, don't be a coward. <laughs> don't be a coward. If it was like, if it was speaking to myself, like don't be a coward, like you know this stuff. Like, it doesn't matter if you compare uh, other people with yourself, like, anybody can do it. Uh, technical skills like intelligence, they will not hinder you. The only thing that will hinder you is not talking to people, uh, always overthinking things. Like I used to, to not talk enough, you know, and now I just don't care if I don't look pretty or if I'm not speaking like perfect, uh, or if I know exactly what I'm doing at uh, every single time, I don't care. I just go ahead. I talk and uh, it works. <laughs> you know, your network is your, your network. Like I remember hearing this as a kid, like, I didn't, I didn't understand what this meant, <laughs> but um, I see it now. I see it now. Uh, like it, and you never know. Like, like I, I, I normally say to my friends, like, drop every seed that you can, because you never know how, how much it will grow. Like the biggest businesses, the big, biggest opportunities like this, like your, your connection, the, the projects I have, they all came from things that I would never expect them to, to come from. This is not to say that you cannot uh, predict how to create those opportunities. It's just that you should be open to be surprised. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, that's the reason why you have those projects that you landed and someone else didn't, right? Yeah. There are developers who are more talented than you, they're more experienced, they have more years of experience, and yet they, they might not be able to land a single client or they might even be laid off, right? And looking for their next job at the stage and you have like zero income. It's, yeah. it's in the market what a lot of people don't understand is that it's not the best developers who will win yeah. at this stage, especially it's really the people who take action who are entrepreneurial, who go fast. They, they see the opportunity mm -hmm. in the market and they jump on it. They're opportunistic. Uh, that's yeah. exactly those yeah. that will win. Because for a lot of those projects, you don't need to be like a super, like a genius programmer in order to deliver on what those businesses need. Yeah. A lot of businesses they need things that are not extremely complicated. There's a wide range of developers who can deliver on it. But the ones who are going to land those deals and who will profit from it and who will build those relationships and they will grow more and more, they are the ones who are opportunistic. They take action. They go fast. Yeah. And we have only a few years. That's what I, I keep reminding people is if we look at the past trends in history, it's only a few years time. Like when the internet appeared, there was a few years that was golden. There is always a way later to, to sell those services, but then it's much more competitive. It's yeah. much harder. The opportunity that is a goal where it's easy to start those things, it's only for a few years. Same thing when social media came out and people would start those social media, like marketing agencies. For a few years, it was so easy to land clients and make a lot of money. And after that, when everyone jumped into the market, the competition became too high. And then you had to be really good to stand out. Yeah. That's usually how it works. Like when the market matures, it's always possible to make money. It's always possible to do those things. But you have to be much better. You have to be much more professional, uh, better service, because people know that, okay, I can go with this one or this one or this one. Then they start comparing prices, start comparing yeah. like quality, experience, et cetera, et cetera. So it gets harder to, to begin. Definitely. Uh, I remember like on the SMMA hype, you know, or a couple of years ago, and that's also something that I missed on. Like I knew I could, I could have done that as well. Like every once in a while. Like, it was another trend, right? Yeah, man, every once in a while, like something like this comes up. Uh, but I think that AI, like in our lifetime, like, I don't know the, the future, but I don't think that everything, that every, every, any opportunity will come close to what we're living right now. It's crazy. It's absolutely like, crazy. Yeah, yeah, like SMMA, dropshipping, etc. Like crypto, it has nothing to do with AI. It's just the scale is. AI it's absolutely different. different. It's different. It's different. It's different. There's so much money being poured into this. Like every business in the world like, needs this. Uh, everybody can profit from you. So if you can communicate that profit, like, it's uh, it's GG. <laughs> it's game over. <laughs> yeah. All right, Josie, thank you for your time. I appreciate that a lot. Congratulations again on your success and wish you all the best. Thanks, man. I'll see you at Accelerate. <laughs>